For more on BP's latest efforts to stop that oil leak and perhaps the origin of this spill and blowout to begin with, Kevin Book is with us. He's a managing director at Clearview Energy Partners. Kevin, let's start with what we heard from Mike Williams on 60 Minutes last night. On the one hand, he says there was a dispute between BP and Transocean over whether or not to cement in that third plug in the, uh, the shaft uh, as early as they did. And secondly, he also said there was a problem with what they call the annular, a rubber gasket that helps gas from escaping. And thirdly, he said there was a problem with a blowout preventer. It wasn't getting, uh, at least the, it wasn't fully redundant. Uh, part of it had broken down. And it really seems to suggest, based on what he says and what 60 Minutes reported, that BP and Transocean perhaps bear more responsibility in terms of negligence than just the technical failure of uh, some of their equipment. What do you think? think of what you heard. Uh, good morning, Eric. Thanks for having me. I think it's a little bit premature to make any conclusions based on any one party's stories, because unfortunately we have entered into the period where even with the first modest successes towards containment, we're now getting to the liability and finger pointing game. But the questions are ones that deserve to be asked, and unfortunately, it seems like whatever did happen, if it can be linked to negligence, it's got big implications for the companies involved. The $75 million cap in liability only holds if there is no negligence. So this makes us a pretty pretty high-stakes game at this point, Eric. Okay, I understand that we don't want to start finger-pointing and we don't want to accuse a company of negligence when it hasn't been proven. But if, in fact... Transocean, for example, did maneuver a, a joystick, as they called it, uh, during a, a test run, and that damaged the annular. And if, in fact, they knew that the blowout preventer wasn't working properly, yet continued with the drilling process, uh, does that constitute negligence? Would it likely to const be likely to constitute negligence? It certainly would provide grounds for someone to make a, make a claim in court on that basis. And that, I think, ultimately is where we'll find out how this tests out. Where we were last week was kind of interesting. In the, in the testimony provided by the, the parties when they went before the Senate Energy and Senate Environment Committees, there was an awkward silence when asked, you know, is this process that you were asked to do different from the traditional process? And uh, nobody, nobody would come out and say, well, no, this was different, this was done differently. Uh, it, was, it seemed as though at that time uh, there was a lot more hesitancy, in spite of what the president may have suggested, about uh, true finger pointing. And I think we have entered into uh, sort of the, the higher stakes round of the blame game. Well, as you point out, Kevin, the stakes grow because if, in fact, negligence is identified, you know, the cap on damages goes well above that $75 million limit. That is Kevin Book, Managing Director at Clearview Energy Partners, joining us on the phone this morning with the latest on what we've heard about the BP spill.